what is up everyone welcome back to the channel welcome to another first ride video of the yamaha x max 300 the tech max variant now this is just gonna be a first ride video we have it for about 20 minutes and i want to see just how it rides on a first impressions video a couple of specs on the thing we got a 300 cc single cylinder engine with a cvt drive build we do have about 28 horsepower and about 29 newton meters of torque it's quite pretty in this black it's a yamaha we do have the tech max package with the multimedia screen right here that's currently showing a ref counter the little screen up here we also have keyless entry and keyless ignition the under seat storage is decent for two helmets it says it can fit two full-size helmets one here in the front one here in the back and a bit of room in the middle between them so that's nice we do have quite an interesting design seat with a lot of metal accents. We'll see just on a first impressions how comfortable the thing is. What else in terms of spec? Let's look at the phone. Well, nothing much. I didn't have a time. I didn't have much time to prep for this one. I think we have 15 or 14 inches in terms of wheel size let's see so 15 in the front a 15 inch wheel in the front and a 14 inch wheel in the back anyway enough blabbering let's get on and ride this thing because i only have it for 20 minutes and i want to see exactly how it rides on a first impressions video so kill switch we ain't got much time uh, where do you start it here Okay, so in terms of buttons, we have our kill switch start button, start uh, engine combo button right here. We have our hazard lights. These are to control the screen, so it's uh, okay. Let's see what options we have. We have music, odometer, trim meter, meter display. It goes tachometer, speed, eco, okay. Navigation, notifications, weather, and settings. In terms of settings, we have traction control. We can turn off connections, uh, information, clock brightness units, uh, system information, legal information, yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of meter display, what if we put on echo, what does it show? Oh, it shows our average fuel consumption. That's nice. But I'm going to put it on uh, tachometer. And also on the left hand side we have our horn, our indicators and our high beam and passing light. Let's take it out for a ride, we got another 20 minutes to go. Where should we go? We should go right here. Now, first of all, the engine does feel a little bit gutsy. At 28 horsepower, it feels like it has quite a bit of a punch and the transmission is very eager to send that power to the rear wheel. In terms of handling, well, it handles kind of like a regular maxi scooter, although it is a little bit shorter than bigger maxi scooters that uh, are made for touring. This thing is, feels a little bit more nimbler. It kind of reminds me of the BMW uh, the C400 that I rode, the C400X. It's a 300, uh, you would think it might be good for long distance trips and it feels like you can do a long distance trips on it. I'm not uncomfortable per se, I don't know how I would be after about two or three hours on the saddle. But uh, now it feels comfy in terms of seat. It is a bit on the hard side, but I think this is a brand new, relatively brand new unit. It has uh, 2,600 kilometers on the clock and uh, it's probably going to wear out uh, eventually and get a lot softer. Uh, in terms of leg room, I am in, my, in the regular city riding position and there is some room, but if I put my feet up here, it feels a little bit cramped. Even at my 175 centimeters tall, it does feel a little bit cramped. It doesn't feel like uh, you can't really stretch out on it, but for the city, yeah, it's good enough. Yeah, it has some go to it. Okay, 28 horsepower is uh, 28 horsepower is not too shabby. It has a bit of go to it. It's fun. It's fun. It's nimble. You can easily chuck it around traffic. 
Yeah, it works. It gets the job done. And uh, yeah, what can I say? It's a Yamaha. So uh, there's nothing rattling. Although this display looks a little bit old school. I don't know, kind of an old school combined with new school. It, ha it is very high definition, but then again, it's just an LCD display. I like the rev counter. It is nice. And all of the options that uh, you have with it, connecting your phone, getting navigation on it, that's real nice. But uh, what I don't see is a button to quickly switch between all the menus because sometimes I have my navigation, but I want to check my, I don't know, engine information. Uh, I don't even know where the trip meter is on this thing. I have my odometer here and my fuel gauge up uh, above the odometer, but I don't know where my trip meter is. If I press these buttons on the go, nothing happens. Oh, so we do have a quick button. We can see our average speed, our fuel consumption, instant fuel consumption, trim time, air temperature, coolant, battery, average speed, average fuel, instant fuel, trip time, air temperature, coolant again. Yeah. So yeah, it does have a quick button to show you a lot, a lot of information and that is nice. I like to, like on the go, I like to check up on things. Like when I'm riding, I'm doing a highway, I'm doing something and I, 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 I like to have like a quick button to check up on everything, see everything is working well and uh, then carry on. Uh, what I'm not seeing is tire pressure sensors. I'm not seeing tire pressure sensor, nor am I seeing an adjustable windscreen. It might be a, it might be adjustable if you move the holes around because I see it has different mounting holes. But it's not something you can adjust quickly on the fly. It's not electric or even manual where you can lift, lift it up, uh, push it down. Yeah, so that is a bit, a bit of a niggle. But the scoot feels nice. It feels very light on its feet. That's surprisingly light on its feet. Feels more like a little 125 in terms of weight and how easy it is to maneuver. Whee! Let's hang a right here. A left, sorry. Let's hang a left here. Check for the tram. No tram. Let's go. You know, it's impressive, I have to say. I wasn't expecting it. It feels... This is something that is very hard to put into words and uh, show on video. It's not impressive with the specs, but it feels solid. Even here, I'm taking the bumps and uh, the suspension is a little bit harsh. It's not very compliant, but uh, then again, nothing is rattling and the scooter isn't jumping around. So the suspension, although it's not soaking up the bumps, it's the dampening is on point because uh, it's not unsettling the scooter. And a bit of punch it, let's see how it goes. 70, 80, 90, 98, 100. Yeah, it has some go and it can easily cruise like 110 at about 5,000, 6,000 RPM. So yeah, you could tour on this thing. I'm not sure about the comfort per se, but yeah, I can find myself a decently comfortable position. And the back support is, I would have liked it to be a little bit taller. The back support, I would have loved for it to be a little bit taller. Whoa. Intruder 1800 nice and a Liberty 125 ABS Punch it As usual the little scoot Just making mincemeat of the traffic <laughs> That little that little Man, what am I saying? That gigantic intruder 1800 around the city has no chance against this thing. It really doesn't. Impressive. Impressive from Yamaha, but I wasn't expecting anything less. I would love a bit of extra kit with it, considering it is decently pricey i think it's over six thousand euros i don't know the price exactly but i think it's over six thousand euros for that i would have loved maybe an electrically adjustable windscreen maybe some heated grips maybe hand guards uh, 
I don't know. There, there are a lot of things they could have added and not uh, cost much money. I mean, uh, this dash with its Bluetooth connectivity, connectivity, it was a selling point a couple of years ago. But now a lot of scooters are coming out with uh, these kinds of dashes. So it's uh, no longer kind of like the big talking point. There are a lot of scooters for a lot less money that have uh, just about the same functionality and more. Uh, but what you do get with it uh, is the name, you know, it's a Yamaha, so you have the backing of a big company behind you in terms of parts, in terms of warranty and everything. Uh, and also, it, it feels solidly built. Now, I, I can compare it directly to, to my Zontes 350E, which is uh, cheaper than this and has a lot more tech. Uh, the only thing is, this does feel a little bit more solid than the Zontes, but the thing is, not by much. It feels uh, maybe 10% more solid. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels, I don't know, hmm hard to put into words that's the best way I can do it it feels solid like I'm taking bumps nothing's rattling not it, it feels like it's made out of uh, cement out of concrete but then again so does the Zontes that's the thing so does the Zontes 350e this maybe feels about probably 10% better and considering how much extra kit you get on the Zantes, mm, I think Yamaha needs to put this thing into a bit of a redesign and start adding features. I think it's time for an update to the model. And uh, maybe a second, another generation, a new generation of X-Max. I don't know. As it sits, it's a nice scoot. If somebody buys it, uh, they are going to thoroughly enjoy it, uh, for sure. Uh, I'm not mocking it or anything. I'm not trying to put it down. It's an awesome machine. It feels well built. It feels quality. The transmission is buttery smooth. And the engine response is very, very progressive and easy to handle. I basically got used to it in an instant. It doesn't have any kind of weird quirks or anything. Brakes are good. They're not Brembo's, but they are good. It's comparable to any 300cc class scooter currently on the market. It's a single brake desk up front and it feels it in the lever, but uh, they're good. They're good. They're just about as good as any single disc up front brake system on any scooter. You cannot compare single disc uh, to dual discs. They just, dual discs just have a certain bite to them, a certain instant bite that uh, single discs just do not have. You know, let's play a little bit more. I still have seven to eight minutes to take it back. Let's play a little bit more with it. <laughs> you know, it, it's fun, it's fun. Uh, get some ventilation going. You know, the windscreen is doing quite a good job of protecting me from the wind and from the elements. Uh, we do have two pockets here that open by pressing them. They are, uh, I know, covered in this velvet material, which looks nice, and uh, the scoot isn't brand spanking new, so it seems to be wearing nicely. We have the fuel tank down here, but yeah, in terms of wind protection, you put your leg here, you are completely covered from the wind. The windscreen is quite tall for a stock windscreen. It is on the high position currently, but it is quite tall for a stock windscreen. You do have these winglets on the side that also take a bit of uh, draft from your hands yeah wind protection is actually top-notch like I said I would have loved for it to be electrically adjustable so I can lower it maybe on a hot day just lower it and get a little bit more ventilation not having to use to have tools with me but uh, as it sits in a on a cold chilly mid-may day it's uh, providing quite a lot of weather protection and uh yeah i'm liking that i'm not gonna say no to the weather protection oh hell no <laughs> it is fun god damn it it is fun it's expensive it's expensive and there are there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of good competition in the 300 cc class but it is fun and it feels chuckable and these are hard things for uh, scoots to pull off. I mean, 
once you get up into the 300 400 cc class it's hard to make them feel light i mean it feels let's put it like this it feels lighter and more nimble than my zantes and also fit feels a lot more uh, smaller and compact more compact than the zantes not only does it not not only when you look at it but also when you ride it Granted, the Zantes feels good on the open road, on the highway, being so big and wide, but uh, around the city, this thing feels, uh, it feels more nimble. It feels a little bit more like uh, a toy, a 125, something you can easily handle uh, between cars in the city. And uh, it has some punch to it. At 20 horsepower, it does have some punch with, to it. You can have a lot of fun in the city with this thing. Green! Again, the suspension over the tram lines, you feel the tram lines and then again, it doesn't unsettle the scooter. So it's not all that squishy, comfortable suspension, but then again, it doesn't unsettle the scooter. So it's a good suspension in terms of handling. Let's see this bumpy road. Oh, it, yeah, it's, you kind of feel the bumps, but you still have control over the scooter, even on hard bumps. Brakes, 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 brakes. Thank you, thank you everyone. You see, even on hard bumps, uh, you feel them, but you have control over the scoot. So the suspension is dampening the bumps and keeping the wheels in contact with the road, but it is uh, sending a bit of that uh, shock from the bump to your spline. But, uh, to your spine, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, kind of all, all of these 300cc scooters, because they are made to be ridden both in the city and out of the city, need suspensions that uh, keep the wheel in contact with the road, not necessarily properly comfortable suspensions. And because they don't have a lot of suspension travel, because everybody wants a big underseat storage, then uh, that's kind of the compromise you have. Anyway, I'm gonna take this back because my time with it is up. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video, this little first ride of the Yamaha X-Max 300. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care out there everyone and ride safe. Bye. <laughs>